I focus very much on DIPG uh, because it's actually one of the most challenging uh, areas uh, in brain cancer in kids. Um, and it really came about because I was uh, developed a drug delivery system for uh, treating Parkinson's disease. And um, I was approached by a colleague who said, you know, we have a child who's got uh, this condition and would your system uh, work in this in this type of environment and, and, and sure enough you, you could deliver anything down this uh, device and so we embarked on uh, a treatment on compassionate grounds and found that we could deliver drugs safely to this critical area and that's fairly rapidly sort of picked up with um, uh, more and more children being referred to us uh, to try and treat them and we've used uh, a fairly conventional chemotherapy drug carboplatin um, and actually it did require quite a lot of work in the background beforehand in looking at the toxicity and safety of that and, and getting MHRA approval and then other et ethics approval and things like that to actually treat these children and I guess for the first time in this disease we're seeing the the tumors uh, being controlled by a chemotherapy agent uh, when you know children had radiotherapy and then there's the inevitable progression within months. We are now being able to get that under control. And so that's been a fantastic start, really, to um, uh, really the potential of delivering much more specific and targeted drugs. The biggest problem we face in, in neurological disease is, is getting drugs across the blood-brain barrier. Uh, in Parkinson's disease, there uh, is, is a protein, a naturally occurring protein, called GDNF. And experimentally, that's been shown to repair nerve damage and effectively uh, reverse animal models of disease. And um, really, to get a protein across the blood-brain barrier, you, you have to deliver it directly. And then not only get it in there, but actually drive it out to cover the appropriate volumes. And this is something I've worked on for something like 10 years or more. Um, and uh, this has required uh, developing quite sophisticated equipment so we use robotics uh, to deliver the devices because they need to be, they're very, very tiny. The catheters are just over half a millimetre in size and they need to go over quite long distances in the brain. And so to do that um, is, is a sort of challenging thing to do. And I've worked in collaboration with a, with a, a company called Renishaw, who are an engineering company at the sort of top end of um, uh, being able to uh, deal with tiny things, uh, both manufacture them and quantify them, measure them. And um, so they have really worked in partnership with me to develop the technology, which includes the robots, the software, and the devices to deliver into the brain. And we've now brought that into a clinical study in 42 patients. Um, and you know, now is the time I, I, I guess we can start looking at oncology which is a huge uh, area where there, you know, we really are not making any progress at all. And there are many drugs now you can start looking at that previously you couldn't because you simply couldn't get them across the blood-brain barrier. So in a way, it's a kind of exciting time for us. And uh, we're now looking to collaborate with people with the, sort of the know-how in, in these areas. And so this meeting that we're at now is, has been very helpful in that. No, the, the catheters have to be very tiny anyway, and so um, they're, they're only half a millimetre in diameter, so they're very, very tiny. Uh, so th there hasn't really been much uh, in the way of changing the technology at all. It's the same, exactly the same. The, uh, the differences are, are, you know, skull thickness and things like that, these are more technical things, but a child's skull is only maybe a millimetre to a millimetre and a half thick, whereas an adult's is up to a centimetre. So from a technical point of view or surgical point of view, there are some issues, but we, we've, we've tackled those. So uh, we've seen, surprisingly, you know, shrinkage of the tumour um, where we've been able to infuse. And we've, we've, we've learned how to infuse quite large volumes. So uh, in other centres around the world, they may deliver, you know, say, a mil or, or two mils. We can deliver... 10 mils or more in a day and this is down to designing the catheters which can safely infuse over large volumes under low pressure rather than a point source of high pressure so there are some technical aspects there 
and also because of the accuracy with which we can deliver catheters, we can do it very safely. So we can put lots of catheters in. We can put four catheters into the brain stem uh, quite safely. Uh, that means we can get an, an efficient and, uh, delivery over the whole volume. Uh, so uh, we've seen shrinkage of tumours uh, in, well, for the majority of our patients. And uh, with that, uh, prolonged survival. Okay, so the choice of the drug was um, carboplatin doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. Uh, it certainly is effective against gliomas in, in, a, in a Petri dish. Um, it's water-soluble. So the, those, those, those are important things. So when you put this rather toxic drug into the brain, it doesn't cross out. And therefore, there are no systemic side effects from it. It stays in the brain for a long time. and. It's a thing called the area under the curve. There's a long exposure time to a drug um, that's, that's, that's um, actually proves to be pretty effective. And uh, it's been surprisingly effective in, in, in otherwise very resistant disease. It's probably not as severe as radiotherapy, to be honest. So, so normally there is a repair mechanism of DNA, so that's a process that continues. Um, certainly in the cells, the, the, the normal cells. And so far we've, we've done 20 infusions at what, what would be a massive dose uh, in, in children. Uh, so you, you know, simply to get that, that concentration across the blood-brain barrier, you'd have to give 10 times the tolerated dose. You know, it would not be, children wouldn't survive that, giving it systemically. Uh, so the, the actual dose in the tissue is, is, is huge by normal standards. Uh, but you know, extremely well tolerated, and we've not seen any sort of <coughs> concerning long-term effects from that. We've treated uh, so far uh, um, six children on compassionate grounds while we've been trying to raise money, and we've been raising money through a charity called Funding Neuro, and uh, really specifically for this trial. And they have raised something like £650,000 in a very short time. Uh, so this has been a very efficient way of raising money, probably faster than many of the routine kind of pathways. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of public support. You know, so this has been on the TV and on the radio and it's on the web. And so you know, there, there's been enormous generosity from people and patients, families. Um, so we have raised both the awareness of this disease and, um, you know, and, and the money, really. Um, one child who um, was referred to us for compassionate treatment two weeks ago, um, the family needed to raise money because there is no support. And they went on TV South in the, at 6 o'clock in the evening, and by 10 o'clock in the evening they'd raised £40,000. Um, just by public donation. So this is possible. And um, so that, that's what we've relied on, this sort of thing happening up until now. But uh, we're now ready to, to run this, this 15 patient trial. Um, and our objective is really to, is to prolong survival. We're not going to cure the disease, but we would prolong survival. And ha these children would hopefully have a good quality of life because this isn't toxic chemotherapy that we're, we're used to with hair falling out and them being sick. They just sit and watch TV and then go home. Um, so it's a very, very different approach. They get a good quality survival and we've certainly extended life in certainly one child by at least a year, others by many months so far and there are many, you know, five out of our six children are alive and still receiving treatment. So um, this is definitely doing something. I guess you have to believe it's possible, and um, I think it's got to have. It's going to be an immunotherapy of some form, where your body recognises the tumour as, as foreign and seeks it out. At the moment, uh, the therapies are not really at the point uh, of safety. I, I don't think. Uh, but that's so. What we're doing is simply using conventional methods to shrink the thing down, and to, uh, I think we're we're controlling the disease where we can deliver. But as with all cancer, it, it sort of cells migrate away from where we're infusing. And yes, we could put more catheters in. Yes, we could do this. But ultimately, you want something a bit more sophisticated, really, to, to seek out 
or get the body to seek out and destroy the, the, the tumour cells. Well, we now have the ability to treat neurological disease with a whole range of different drugs, uh, which were never available because they wouldn't cross the blood-brain barrier. So, and we can safely deliver those where they need to go. So that actually is quite a big step at this point. And of course, we want the cures for all these things, but this is an important step towards it. Okay, so this is currently what's called an in-house device, so it's only made the manufacturer is formerly my hospital, it's made by a company on, on their behalf. Um, they, this other company called Renishaw wished to then make it into a product in time, but they had to go through quite a long process of manufacturing their own device, and I think that is in progress. It would be more sophisticated perhaps than the one we have. Um, but all these things take time, and it may be, say, a year away, they've got to do their own trials in other areas, and so that, that I think will happen. Um, but in the context of trials, it is possible to use um, experimental devices as well. So I'm hopeful that other people will be able to you know, use the same thing and, and we can start some bigger trials looking at different things.